As was shown in the first film, the sudden closure of a valve at the end of a long pipe causes an elastic surge to be propagated back and forth between valve and reservoir at sonic speed. At the reservoir end of the pipe, it is always reflected negatively. And at the valve end, it is always reflected positively. As a result of which, the pressure fluctuates rapidly between positive and negative values. The waveform being influenced also by the elasticity and resistance of the pipe. If the initial velocity of the water is very high, the initial pressure rise can be so great as to cause rupture of the pipe. Conversely, the reduction in pressure when the wave becomes negative can produce cavitation of the liquid, as seen here in slow motion. The initial vapor pocket thereafter collapsing against the valve and then tending to reform repeatedly. Because of the noise that is produced by the sound wave in either case, the phenomenon is very aptly called water hammer. The best way of preventing water hammer is to require that the valves be closed slowly enough to hold the pressure at a safe value. Moreover, pressure tanks containing air set into the line will very effectively cushion the pressure changes. Not only is the flexibility of the pipe involved to an appreciable degree, but in the extreme case, that of the fluid is negligible in comparison with that of the boundaries through which it flows. This condition is found in the arterial system of the human body. The pulse, which might aptly be called blood hammer, is transmitted from point to point along an artery by virtue of the elasticity of the blood vessel itself. The initial wave is generated, of course, by the pumping action of the heart. <laughs> 